In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to convert XLOOKUP into a Python when we have two separate tables. And so the tables I have here, I have one table here with a date time and then a, a number. And then I have another table here. It's incremented at 15 minute intervals and another number here. And so I want it to look at this date time, come over here to this table, see if it's on this table and if it is return that number if not won't do anything so we're going to go xlookup true when this equals this a number from this row over here return column 15. And then i'm going to leave the uh if not found blank we're just going to have na for the time being <clears throat> so the last part is which one is do i want to lock so i want to lock I'm going to keep this table intact as this is going down. So I'm going to lock these two right here. And I'm going to leave the A2 unlocked because we want that to go down every row. I'm going to hit equals, bring that down. We can see that uh, this is merging over here 651, 933, and 354. So to do this inside of Python, we're going to use very simply uh, a pd.merge. So we have to import the pandas library up here, and we've gotten this all set up here with my tables uh, that we printed. So pd.merge, and then we're going to have three parameters. The, the left is going to be uh, this table right here. And so this is called df1 in my code. So I've told it df1. The right is going to be that's the name of this table over here, so that's df15. And then the how is going to determine uh, which rows we want to have in this new, uh, I say new, it's not technically new, but it's recreating the, the data frame. What rows do we want in this recreated data frame? So since we want the X lookup to be on this first data uh, frame table over here, we're going to specify that we want it to merge on the left, which is going to be that first data frame table. And that's it. So that's that's the uh, extent of the code here. And so I'm going to go ahead and run this, print this to a CSV, and then we'll look and see what the result is. OK, and we can see that it worked out exactly as we wanted. These are different numbers because I have them, excuse me, randomly uh, creating different numbers. But we can see the 168 matches up on the 730, the 894 on the 745, and et cetera. So now what we want to do is we want to have this fill down. So this would be the equivalent of if we said xlookup uh, true, same thing again. Uh, now, so what we defaulted it to was exact match. And so that's what it's looking for. It's looking for this exact uh, match. Let's say instead we wanted to say if it doesn't match, find the next smaller or the next larger item. We're going to start on the next smaller. So we would say negative one here. And then uh, let's go ahead and lock these again. <clears throat> we can see that sort of like it, it fills it all the way down until we get to 894. And then what did I do wrong here? I did something wrong. Let's see. I think it's the way I wrote this um, X lookup. So we're going to adjust how I wrote this. So instead of saying true and then the formula here, what we're going to say is just look up this value over here and then look down through this column here. So I'm going to lock these again. I think what we'll see is it'll do what we're looking at. There we go. Okay. So now it comes down to one, uh, 168 and then uh, we get to 894 and then as it goes down through here, it doesn't find a match, so it uses that most recent one, 894. And so to do this in Python, all we have to do is this little formula right here. We're saying df1, this is the new um, data frame table, because what we had up here is originally df1. We put df1 over here, so it overrode that prior data frame table, and since all we brought over was that one column. It basically had the effect of just adding a column. And so now we're taking this data frame one over here 
and we're forward filling, um, and we have to put in place equals true, and so that's going to fill it down. So what this F fill stands for is forward fill, and so the reason why it's going down is because if you noticed on the Excel, the time is increasing as we go down. And so in its mind, a forward is down because as we go down, we're getting we're going forward in time. So if we wanted to do the opposite, we wanted it to um, come from the bottom up, we would change this F fill to B fill, which stands for back fill. So I'll run that and here's the Excel here. And we can see that again, we have different numbers. Let me, um, so we can see here it's finding this 558 for 730. And then 731, we got 573, which is that 745 value that's filling up from uh, 745. So 